Yesterday, on the 31st of March, 2023, I released a post on social media where I said that I admire the Islamic principle of Tawheed. And a lot of uh, people were offended, especially uh, my fellow Christians. And they said, why would I admire the Islamic principle of Tawheed? Now, listen, Tawheed is just a principle in Islam, which basically means that God is one, on, is united. He doesn't have a partner or an equal, and there are no compartments in him that are also God. He's just one God. And Tawhid agrees exactly with Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6.4, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. I don't believe in the Trinity. And I know a lot of Christians are shocked when I say I don't believe in the Trinity. Here's the thing. For the first 325 years of Christianity, there was nothing like the Trinity. And this is a fact. It's not something you come to argue with me. It's a fact. The Trinity came up in the Council of Nicaea. Nicaea is a city in modern-day Turkey, where I've been to, it's now called Inche. They came up with the principle of the Trinity there, God in three places. Before 325 AD, it did not exist. And if you see Tawhid, Tawhid, that principle, it's an Islamic principle, I know, but it's origin. Because when the Muslims, when Prophet Muhammad wasalam, got his revelation, there was some challenge in uh, his homeland. So they had to leave and they got asylum. His, the first uh, followers of Muhammad, of Prophet Muhammad, they got asylum in Ethiopia. And if you go to Ethiopia, this is a country I've been to more than 15 times. They are Orthodox Christians. That means they try as much as possible to stick with the pure Christianity that Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, taught. Now, the name of their church is the Tewahedo Orthodox Ethiopian Church. Tewe so look at that word, Tewahedo. That Tewahedo actually means the same thing as Tawhid. One united, one united. And so it's quite possible because the Ethiopians have been using this for over 2,000 years. So it's quite possible that when the first Muslims went there, they were influenced by the Ethiopians. Because if you look at an Ethiopian Christian priest, an Orthodox Ethiopian Christian priest, you can hardly differentiating, distinguishing from an Islamic is, uh, imam. Now, I'm going to put a photo. This photo you're seeing on the screen is an Orthodox Ethiopian priest, somebody that I've met. And there are many of them. That, that's just how they dress. If you look at how Orthodox Ethiopian Christian women dress, you can hardly differentiate them from how Muslim women dress because they use the hijab. They don't call it the hijab. You know, they call it their own thing, but they use the hijab. And they've been dressing like that before even Islam was founded. And so it's quite possible that when the first Muslims went there, you know, they were influenced because a lot of people don't know this. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's daughter, Um Rukayata, Um Rukayata, bint Muhammad, and her husband, you know, um, Uthman, they lived in Ethiopia. They actually lived. They, they went. Um, they, they, they went with uh, to Ethiopia with the first Muslims. They lived in Ethiopia. So there are a lot of things in Islam that are similar to pure Christianity. And I look at them and I admire them. Now, I don't believe in Islam. I'm not a Muslim. I'm never going to be a Muslim. But I respect Islam. Why? Because Muslims, they look at their holy book and if anything is not in their holy book, they don't practice it. They stay. They are there. So if you take the Islam that is being practiced today and then if you we are able to get into like a time machine and go back 1,400 years ago to the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Islam that they are practicing now is exactly the same with the Islam that was practiced under Prophet Muhammad SAW. So why can't we as Christians be like that? Why do we have to accept things that are not in Scripture? Trinity is not in Scripture. There is I, I challenge you try to justify Trinity without using logic or tradition or church doctrine. You can't, because that's that's the basis. There is no even the word Trinity does not exist in, exist in Scripture. The, I mean, Christ Himself said in John seventeen three, says this is eternal life that they may know you. He didn't say they may know me. He said they may know you, the only true God. He was referring to God in heaven, and then Yeshua Hamasiah, whom you have sent. Yeshua Himself said it there that my Father is greater than I. But then this principle of Trinity says that there are three gods and then they are all united in one, none greater than the other. That's what that's the, that I'm giving you the textbook definition of the Trinity. It was men that came together in the year 325 AD in Nicaea. And a lot of you know me. Before I believe anything, 
I will go and read it in the original languages. Then I will use my money. Thank God, God has blessed me with money. I will go to the place. I will, all these places you see in scripture, I've been there. And a lot of you who follow me, you know that. I will go there because I am searching for the truth. I don't want to follow one church dogma. I want to know the truth. So all of these things, Christmas, look, Christmas is not in the original Christianity. For the first hundred years of Christianity, they never celebrated Christmas. Yeshua, Hamasiah, who some people call Jesus Christ and his disciples, never celebrated it, never asked us to celebrate it. If you talk to these so-called Christians that celebrate it, but they'll start to argue, what is wrong if we take one day out of all the days in the years to celebrate our Lord? Is it you that will tell God how you want to celebrate him? Or is it God that will tell you how you should celebrate him? When the children of Israel did the same thing, let us take one day to celebrate God. They didn't say to celebrate a devil. They said to celebrate God. When God found out what happened, you know, they, 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 I mean, he punished them. A lot of them died. So why will we be so presumptuous? Easter, Easter is not in scripture. A lot of them say, Easter is not in scripture. Read Acts chapter 12, verse 4. The word used, and I read scripture in the original languages. The word used in the original language is Pascha. Pascha means Passover. We know the exact date of Passover. Passover happens in the Jewish month of Nisan. They remove, that is, when, when I say they, I'm talking about the European pagans who later, who claimed they became Christians. They removed the word Pascha, Passover, in, from Acts chapter 12, verse 4, and replaced it with the word Easter in the King James Version. That's why if you read every other translation, they state Passover. Only the King James Version uses the word Easter. And that word Easter was put there by men like you and I. And you just accept it. Listen, if you go and follow the pure Christianity taught by our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMasiah, the only begotten Son of God. It is different from what came out of Rome and London. Because what came out of Rome and London is, I don't even know if you can call it Christianity. I do not know if you can call it Christianity at all. So, so all this that they've, that they've added there, a lot of things. Look, anything that is not in Scripture, anything that is not in Scripture, don't accept it. No matter what how they use logic, no matter how they use church dogma to justify it, no, stick with scripture. Stick with scripture because scripture was given to you to guide you by God. It was given to you to guide you by God. And try as much as possible to read scripture in the original languages. It's not hard. I learned it as an adult. You see, when people talk about the Trinity, look, let me tell you. I went to Egypt. You're going to see photos of me in Egypt. I went to Egypt to, to go and research the Trinity. The Trinity actually originated in ancient Egypt. It originated in a place called Thebes. Thebes. T-H-E-B-E-S. And then it's called the Theban Trinity. In that Trinity, you, you're going to see it on the screen. There is a God. That God, the name of the God is Ra, giving a, and you can see it, a cross. A cross which represents, you know, a, a, eternal life to the two other gods. That's where the, that's the way the origin, the origin of Trinity came from. Now, um, uh, the, these people who were uh, the, the rulers in Egypt, you know, a lot of them, you know, is, they dispersed, you know, I mean, after conquest and a lot of things. And so that idea spread into Europe. It's been in Europe for a very, very, very long time in a lot of circles that are esoteric, that are closed to the public. And these were the ruling men, the ruling elite in, in the Roman Empire. And so when the pure Christianity came, they tried to destroy it. When they couldn't destroy it, they said, okay, the next best thing then is this. since we can't destroy it, we are going to come up with these, our own principles, and we are going to force them into Christianity. And then they came up with something called Christendom. And that's when they said to have all these councils, the Council of Nicaea, the Council of Trent, to add things to, this, to Scripture. In the Council of Nicaea, if you read Scripture, Scripture refers to our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMasiah, whom some people call Jesus Christ, as the Son of God. At the Council of Nicaea, they, de they decided, they on their own men, they decided to promote Yeshua to God the Son. Then they said, okay, now they needed... As something to convince the people to accept their own Theban Trinity. So they needed a third person. So they said, okay, let's make the Holy Spirit. We call it God the, uh, God the Holy Spirit, then God the Father. All of these things, all of these terms, they are not in Scripture. So yes, you can hate me. You can say that I'm demon-possessed. You can insult me. I am not here to live my life to, to please you or to please some European church that came and then came to teach our people in Africa and other colonized areas a 
bastardized form of Christianity. No. I am here to live my life according to the dictates of my Lord and my Savior and what he taught in Scripture. So yes, I look at the Islamic Tawheed where it says, where it says that there is only one God. I'm not saying that that God is, I mean, the God that they worship. No, no. But the principle that there is only one God, indivisible. He has no partner. He has no colleague. He is only one God in heaven sitting on the throne. I believe that. If you don't like, if you say that I'm demon possessed, stop following me. But I believe that. And anything that is not in scripture, I do not believe it, no matter the pressure you put on me. So please, hurry and stop following me. Go away. Stop following me on social media. Stop following me on anywhere. I'm not going to change. I believe in only what scripture says. As long as scripture does not say it, I don't believe it, whether it comes from Rome or whether it comes from London. Now, thank you for watching, and may God bless you.